Hey everyone, Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor here. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about something that may affect your sleep in a big way exactly twice a year. I'm talking, of course, about daylight savings time. Of course, it's not just the spring forward losing an hour of sleep that's an issue. Even the falling back gain an hour of sleep could be an issue as well. Since most of us in the United States suffer through these changes twice a year, let's talk about some things that you can do to lessen the toll these changes take on your body. Of course, it's natural to wonder why this is even a thing in the first place, and there are a lot of misconceptions out there about its origin. Some point to daylight savings originating with farming practices or school schedules or even the train companies. But in reality, daylight savings was invented in New Zealand in 1895. However, it was actually first used in Thunder Bay, Canada in 1908 as a way to save energy and make as much use of the daylight hours as possible. Now, I know some states don't observe this shift in the clock, and there are some strong voices trying to abolish this twice-yearly clock-switching business. But here's the deal. We're stuck with it for the time being, so we might as well be smart about how we cope with it. So you might be wondering why just an hour shift in the clock one way or the other can have such a major impact on our collective and individual health. And that's because any change in the time can mess with your circadian rhythm and knock it out of alignment. Remember, your circadian rhythm helps regulate your sleep cycle and because it's influenced by light exposure, the combination of the time change and when we're exposed to light can disrupt our circadian rhythm. So it's not just that we gain or lose an hour of sleep, it's that our whole bodies get knocked out of sync with the natural rhythms of our world. Of course, not everyone is affected by daylight savings the same way. Some lucky states don't observe this at all. But those that do, what we're finding is that really the degree to which you're impacted comes down to your chronotype. Most people may only feel groggy for a while after the time change, but people of a certain chronotype may actually be more affected by the time change. For instance, a study from 2008 found that people who are most productive during the evenings have significantly more restless sleep following the time change. Now, as many of you may know, I'm a big fan of learning your chronotypes. This really does have a profound impact on when you tend to sleep and when you tend to be at your peak productivity throughout the day. So understanding your chronotype is one of the best things that you can do to hedge against the effects of these twice yearly time changes. So what is a chronotype? Well, you're probably familiar with the early bird or the night owl. These refer to when people tend to be their most alert and productive and when they tend to sleep. Part of my contribution to the chronotype literature is to break down the night owl and the early bird even further into four different chronotypes, the lion, the bear, the wolf, and the dolphin. To learn more about your chronotype, check out my chronotype quiz at thesleepdoctor.com. But look, when it comes to adjusting to daylight savings, wolves or night owls have the hardest time followed by dolphins due to their irregular sleep schedule. So the first thing you can do is take the quiz and find out about your chronotype. But what's next? Well, when you lose an hour of sleep, it takes roughly a day or two for your body to adjust. Any change in your sleep due to a shift in the time means it's even more important to rely on sleep hygiene and some solid sleep principles. So here are a few recommendations to survive these shifts. First, follow a consistent sleep schedule and stick to it. As I said, it is also one of the biggest determining factors, not only for your sleep schedule, but for your ideal windows of productivity. So make sure to go to bed at the same time each night and wake up at the same time each morning, even on the weekends or days without strict scheduling. Next, eliminate as much blue light as you can at night. Remember, blue light exposure is important for maintaining your circadian rhythm. However, too much blue light at night can delay melatonin production and keep you awake. Delaying your melatonin production can make it harder to fall asleep when you get in bed and harder to wake up when you need to, especially if it's dark outside. The best way to eliminate blue light at night is to stop using all your electronic devices 60 to 90 minutes before bed. On the other hand, you can use blue light blocking glasses to help your brain produce the melatonin you need to sleep even while using your devices. I mentioned at the top that light is incredibly important. Light is what regulates your circadian rhythm. So the next tip to getting on track after any shift in the clock is get as much daylight as possible. Daylight is what turns off the melatonin faucet in your brain, making it much easier to wake up. The best way to get this is with morning light outside. 
but using a sunlight lamp will certainly help, especially if it's still dark in the mornings. Ideally, you want 20 minutes of natural or artificial sunlight right when you wake up. Another tip for getting through the time shifts is to listen to some music. Using music that moves you can definitely help you wake up in the morning. But if you enjoy listening to music around bedtime, you may want to be careful about what you choose. A recent study from Baylor University found that listening to catchy music before bed can make it much more likely to experience poor sleep. My next tip is this, take a cool, not cold, shower in the morning. Cold tubs and cold showers are having a bit of a moment, and for good reason. It turns out that cool water is great at boosting your alertness and improving your circulation, both of which are helpful for morning wake-ups. So go ahead and take your morning shower as normal, and for the last minute, slowly turn the handle to make the water gradually cooler. You want to make it mildly uncomfortable, but not unbearable. Finally, pay attention to how you fuel your body first thing in the morning. Avoiding carbs is a great idea, especially since they can make you sleepy. I mean, seriously, if you eat a muffin or a bagel, you might as well be taking a sleeping pill after you wake up. Instead, look for a light, high-protein, high-fat breakfast for your morning energy. If you're a coffee drinker, do me a favor, wait until 90 minutes after you wake up to enjoy that first cup. The timing is important since you want the caffeine to give you that extra boost of energy right as your cortisol lowers in order to get your energy back up again. Remember, cortisol is one of the most alerting hormones in the body and it is a vital part of waking you up in the morning. Sleep is a dehydrating event, so instead of drinking coffee first thing, go for at least 15 ounces of water to replenish yourself. Now, all of my parents out there are probably thinking, I might be able to weather the time change, but it certainly sends my kids into a whole tailspin. And that's true. It does take children a little longer to adjust to any shift in the clock. I like to start children a little earlier in this process. So a few days prior to any time change, I have them wake up a little earlier, starting with a half an hour earlier. That way you can gradually anticipate the time change and lessen the severity of its impacts. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.